Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I posted anything just because it has been crazy. I've had so much work from university and I had my wisdom teeth removed, then I had recovery and then I had to catch up on everything that I had missed. But everything is sort of starting to calm down now so I'm so excited to be making a video again. And I'd also like to thank you guys so much for 50 subscribers. We just hit it today. <laughs> and I know that it's a very tiny milestone, but it's a big milestone for me. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for all your support. And today is going to be part one of another two-part video. And it's going to be all about my first year. It's just going to be more from an academic standpoint. I'm going to be telling you guys about all the modules that I had, what type of resources I used for them, what any tips I might have for you, and just what you can expect from them. So, it's probably going to be a long video because I have a lot to say, so let's just get right into it. Okay, so the first module is really probably the most annoying one that you'll have and you'll actually most of the students only have it in second semester but it is AIM 101 or Academic Information Management. It is either 101, 102, 111 or 112. So that is basically a computer subject type thing. <laughs> because so much of the university is being done online even before the whole pandemic, there is a lot of online quizzes, a lot of the information is only given out online, they have a lot of resources online. So it's basically a subject to make sure that people know how to navigate the online environment and then also they make sure that you know how to handle things like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, just the basic stuff. So in your orientation week you write a small test. I was actually so nervous for my first test at university and I failed. <laughs> so basically it's just a bunch of quick questions, practical questions where they ask you for example, I don't know, change the font of this sentence in this paragraph. You know it's really simple, um, basically what went wrong with me is that I'm horrible at Excel but I'm really good at Word and PowerPoint and then I got all the Excel questions first and I had all of them wrong and then by the time I got to the questions that I actually knew my time had run out and I failed the test. And basically what it means is if you fail you have to have that subject for the whole year otherwise vet students only have it for one semester in the second semester. So I had it for the whole year so I decided to include it in my first semester modules. And it is really not a difficult subject, it is something that you just need to get over with. You have one class a week that stretches over two periods, so you have two hours of AIM once a week and that's basically it. You can also decide when you want to have that class. They have the classes every second hour, obviously, from Monday to Thursday. You work out the rest of your timetable, then you go to them and you pick a class that works best for you. So really not difficult. You basically have, I think we had about one assignment a week where we had to edit a Word document a certain, a certain way or this or that. And then you submit it, you get your marks back immediately and I think you usually have three tries. So not very difficult. Just pay attention in class. They are very strict on attendance because it is one of those subjects that a lot of people would skip if they could. So they really check every single class and they make sure that you are there. You also have an exam in it, but it's also not very difficult. You do have a theory part, but it's just a part of an online textbook that they give you that it's the same part for every single test and the exam straight through the year. So study it the first time, get it over with, then you're done. Otherwise, not a difficult subject, basically just something that you need to get over with. Next we have a very frustrating subject and a lot of my friends that are now first year have complained to me about it because it really isn't a fun subject and that is LST 110 and that is language and study skills and the reason why it is such an annoying subject is because it basically feels like you're back in high school English class. It is a lot of writing essays and sentence construction and you know what this should look like and how you should do this and it's it's very high schooly so it's a bit frustrating when you get to university and you still have to do that um, you don't need a textbook for that subject as far as i remember they just gave us notes uh, there used to be exam exemption for that if you had above 80 percent unfortunately from our year onwards they took it away so you cannot get exam exemption. It is actually a really important subject though and you really need to pay attention in it because it addresses two very important things that really are the same thing and that is referencing and plagiarism. And for the people who don't know, I mean I'm pretty sure everyone knows what plagiarism is, it's basically 
taking someone else's work and presenting it as your own. And a lot of people are like, oh yeah, that's something that's frowned upon in high school, you know, you lose marks if you do it. It's actually a crime. You can use your spot at this university, at any other university that you haven't even attended. You can even go to jail for, for plagiarism, depending on the degree of plagiarism. So don't take that chance. So learn how not to do it so that you don't have to be in that situation ever. And referencing is basically just something that you do to say that whatever work you're presenting comes from this person, so that makes it not your own and the other person's. That subject, LST, it, it focuses a lot on that, so it is something that you need to pay attention to, but they are also very strict on attendance. We had two classes a week. It was the only other module that we had where we got to choose when we wanted to have our classes. So basically how it works is there is a bunch of different groups and for example they will say group 1 has class on Monday at 1 o'clock and Wednesday on, at 3 o'clock and group 2 has on Tuesday at 10 o'clock and Thursday 5 o'clock, I don't know. And then you basically just choose whatever group of classes works for you, you sign up for that group and then you're in that class for the rest of the semester. And basically what they do, it is a lot of essays and researchy thingies to make you see what plagiarism is, how not to plagiarize, all of that. So it's a lot of repetition. It honestly feels a bit annoying, but it is something that you need to do. And in the end, it all works up to one big research project. Uh, each group within your class gets a certain subject. Um, different people get different approaches to the same subject. You write your essay based on your approach. They grade your essay, looking for plagiarism and all of that, and then you do a big group presentation at the end. So it is really something that you just need to get out of the way. It's not very fun, especially when your aim and your dream is to become an awesome vet one day and you're sitting here writing essays. But it's not the worst, it's just one of those things you need to do. Next is actually a subject that I, <laughs> I feel bad for saying that I enjoyed it because I didn't very much attend it. But it's a really nice subject and that is MTL 180, that is medical terminology. So that was probably the most vet related subject that we had. And it is basically a subject in which you learn all the Greek and or Latin words for medical terms. So it's a really fun subject, we had it twice a week. Like I said, I didn't attend a lot of it. I will say though that my friends who did go to the classes got about 10 to 20% better than me in the tests. I never did bad, but where I would get a 70, they would get a 90 because the lecturer just explains how you would actually use it and actually apply it and how you would take words apart and put them together for it to make sense. And I didn't have that knowledge, I just had the work to memorize out of the textbook. So you do need a textbook for this. I still have my textbook. It's the only one that I actually kept because I feel like those terms could be very useful in the future. So it was really a subject that I enjoyed and I feel like it was really interesting. Next subject is a subject that is exclusively for vet students and that is VPL 100, Veterinary Professional Life. It is a fairly new subject for vets. They brought it in, I think, a couple of years ago. And it is basically to give you all of that knowledge that you need as a vet, but that none of the other subjects really teach you. So it's things like handling clients, how to handle certain situations. I know that we did a lot of situation handling this year. Uh, last year we were very focused on animal welfare, how to recognize it, what to do about it. So it is a very interesting subject. It was a bit of a frustration sometimes because our second semester, because of a lot of different things that happened, we rarely got to actually have class. We also only have that class once every two weeks. And it was actually really annoying because they told us that for the first semester we would have it on main campus and second semester we would actually be able to go to Onderstepoort for that class. And that never happened. Then they said, okay, we were gonna go this time and then that never happened in the end we only got to spend one afternoon there which was still fun it was really amazing and there were a lot of students and lecturers there who taught us a lot of amazing things and it was so interesting and so inspiring because you've been working so hard the whole year and then in the end we got to have that fun day but they did create a bit of a high expectation for it with it being the only vet subject and you know telling us that we're going to do it the whole semester at on the support campus in the end we didn't get to do that, but it is still a really important subject and it has a lot of information that you need to use one day as a vet. And it's also one of the subjects that sort of kept me going and just gave me hope and reminded me that I am still in a vet school, <laughs> even though it doesn't feel like it with all the other subjects that I have. I'm still in vet school. Next is a really important subject and I want to emphasize that because a lot of people underestimated this. 
and that is MLB triple one or molecular biology. And I think a lot of people underestimated it because we sort of saw it as biology, the same that we had in high school. And the high school biology really does lay an amazing foundation for this work. I mean, I can't imagine having to do it without having had biology in high school. But a lot of my friends didn't have biology in high school and they did fine. They just have to work a bit harder to learn a lot more new concepts than I had to. I don't know what it is, but it was MLB and chemistry that vet students failed the most. I don't know why, why those two subjects, but the two subjects that vet students failed the most in my year was MLB and chemistry. And I think partly it's that a lot of people underestimated and partly that it's a mass of work. It is a lot of things that also we're not very motivated to do because we still have to do parts of plants and a little bit of animals. But yeah, it's a lot of detail and in-depth and a lot of processes and just a lot to take in. For MLB we have four classes a week and then one three-hour tutorial once a week. And the tutorials, it sounds horrible when you say that you have to do something for three hours, but they're really not bad. I actually enjoyed them a lot because <laughs> I got to spend time with my friends. But it's also really informative. I think that is really what pulled me through MLB, was that I would often be behind with the work. And then in the tutorial, you have questions that you have to prepare beforehand. And then you go and you ask questions about it. They explain it again in general. And if you have specific questions, then they ask you some multiple choice questions just to get your memory going and just to get you sort of thinking about the work and then you have a 10 mark quiz and yeah in the end it was what helped me to understand most of MLB. I don't think I would have passed if I didn't go to those tutorials. They're also very strict on attendance for the tutorials. I can't remember how strict they were for the classes but I remember that all my classes in first semester took attendance to some degree except for medical terminology. <laughs> sort of skipped out on that one. <laughs> But you do have a textbook for MLB. I didn't use mine, but you have to get it anyway because you use it in, uh, for another subject in second semester. I didn't use a textbook and it didn't bring me down and it didn't make me fail, but it didn't make me do great either. Same as with the MTL. My friends who use the textbook did a fair amount better than I did, also 10 to 20% better. But I just decided that the textbook was a lot of work to cover when I could just cover the slides and do A. I wasn't at the point where I wanted to, you know, get distinctions for everything. I wanted to understand the work and do the tests and be done with it. <laughs> My whole attitude throughout the first year was that I just wanted to figure myself out and figure this whole new concept out of university and that I was not going to focus on being very prestigious. So I did not do great. But I did properly pass, I didn't have any struggles with passing. But if you want to get good marks, then I would definitely suggest using the textbook when you study. Next is a subject that is very close. No, that is just horrible. I just hate the subject, I'm sorry. For all the people who like it, I don't know what's wrong with you. And this is CMY151, and that is chemistry. Ha. Huh. Shudders, just thinking about it. <laughs> so I've never been great at chemistry, never been much of a chemistry student, but unfortunately you need it and you need to pass it. And I very, very nearly didn't, but I did and everything's fine. <laughs> so chemistry is definitely one of the more difficult subjects that we had. The chemistry that we have is also different from the chemistry that the rest of the BSc students have, the bachelor's in science degree students, because they took basically the chemistry that the BSc students have and they combined the year-long module into a one semester module and they just squashed it all in and only the vet and medical students have that chemistry. And to give you an idea, our pass rate for the first test was I think 40%. The second test was lower. So it didn't go great. A lot of students were panicking because, I mean, I, for one, did amazing in my matric physical sciences exam, so my combination of physics and chemistry, I had in the 90s. So I had to have done well in chemistry, you know, I thought I understood it, but yeah, it really didn't go well. Chemistry was also the first semester test that I had to write in university and I failed it, failed the second semester test, and then I scraped by in the exam. You also have four classes a week and then one three hour long practical. And the practicals are horrible. <laughs> they are really long, really stressful, a lot of preparation, but in the end, they are the things that got me through chemistry. They are what caused me to pass. 
and they're actually really interesting. It's just that you're so busy that you don't have time to realize how interesting they are. So how it works, you get a practical and you have to prepare for it beforehand because you don't get to take any of the notes that they give you into the class. You have to prepare it and then you have to work off whatever notes you made. So you have to make a flow diagram of every single experiment that you do and you get a sheet that you have to fill in about every single chemical that you use, all their dangers, safety hazards, all of that, what you need to do to prevent yourself from being burned to death. <laughs> all of that you have to do research on and you have to do that. So I usually booked off one day of my weekend just for that. We always had chemistry practicals on Monday and I would take my entire Sunday, have nothing planned for then, just to do my practical preparation. And I really appreciate that I did because in the end, if your notes aren't complete, you're screwed for the practical. Luckily, the practicals aren't very difficult, but the thing that makes it stressful is the lack of time. You have to constantly be busy to be able to finish on time. And the reality of the situation is that the experiments do go wrong and they're not always successful and then you have to redo it. So you always need to budget your time for a mistake. So really stressful. I was really stressed about chemistry. It was also really difficult because the lecturer that we had, I was not very fond of her. She worked really quickly. She wasn't really considerate of the amount of time it took for us to keep up with her because she would give us incomplete notes expecting us to fill them in as we go through the class, which is usually a really good method to make sure that everyone is working with her and is paying attention, but she didn't quite give enough time for me and a lot of other students to keep up with her. So I was really panicking because I didn't have complete notes and it also took a while to realize that that was how she worked because I wasn't paying attention. So chemistry didn't go great for me. A lot of students did do fine. Um, I know a lot of students panic because they used to do so well in chemistry and they don't anymore and a lot of them went down a fair amount but they still passed properly. Um, none of my friends or me failed chemistry so it is completely possible to pass it. But like I said, MLB and chemistry were the two main subjects that vet students failed in the first semester. So just be prepared for chemistry. It is difficult, but it is completely doable. There is a textbook, and I feel like the textbook explains the basic concept, but it is definitely not enough to get you to pass. In the end, I passed with extra classes. I got a tutor to help me, and she actually also had to like sit beforehand and figure out what was going on because because it is such a new module, not a lot of tutors actually know what is expected of you and how it is asked and everything. I think we are the first or second year that had it. So it was really still brand new when we got there and they were still figuring a lot of stuff out. So the last subject that we have is my favorite. A lot of people don't agree with me, but it was honestly my favorite because I'm good at it. And that is PHY131 and that is physics. And it was, oh, it was like a relief at the end of a busy week to have physics. So physics, you have also four classes a week and then you have one three hour long practical slash tutorial. Half of it is a practical in which you do little fun experiments where you see how things physically do things. And the other part is a tutorial where you have to prepare questions, you get to ask questions and then you write like, I don't know, a 10 mark test that is usually just one long question. And it's really not difficult. I remember the thing that really made it easy for me was that I did really well in high school physics and I really enjoyed it and I was really up to date with my physics work. And when we got to university, the lecturer spent a lot, a lot of time on vectors. And I understand why, because it forms a basis for all the, basically all the rest of the physics that we did. So he wanted to make sure that we all knew what it was, how it worked and how to handle it. But I was really good with vectors because we had done it since 10th grade and I was really up to date with my physics work. So I could really sit in those classes and relax and just sort of listen with half an ear to see if there was any new information. But for the most part, that was my relaxation class. And the practicals were also not difficult. They were a bit stressful because I feel like the instructions, it's not that they weren't clear, but you couldn't quite form a concept of what's supposed to happen without someone physically explaining it to you. It's very difficult to explain what you need to do on a piece of paper. But the teachers in the practicals are really good, really helpful. You can just ask them anything and they will help you. And in the tutorials, our teacher was also great. The questions from the tutorials were never particularly difficult. They're here or there that there was a difficult one. But also same as with chemistry, I feel like physics is also a thing of either you get it or you don't. I for one very easily see how this could affect this and this works together 
Whereas with chemistry, I can't do that at all. For chemistry, it's always to me like a bunch of abstract happenings just going on in any way that they feel and you have to guess the outcome. Whereas physics, you can physically see the thing physically happening. So it makes so much more sense to me. I don't know why people don't get it. <laughs> but yeah, so that was more of an enjoyable subject for me. You do have a textbook for it and I do recommend that you get it. I think there was an online version available, but I can't remember. Um, but that has all the questions in that you need to answer for your tutorial sessions. I don't think I ever used it for the actual preparation of tests because I just always use the notes from the lecturer. But yeah, there is a textbook that you need to get. Another thing about the textbooks that is really important to know before you buy a secondhand textbook is that the university gives you a lot of online tests and when you buy a new textbook it comes with a code that you put into a certain website and then you are registered with that code as a student at the university and then you do the quizzes on that website and the university gets your marks from there. So if you buy a secondhand textbook you have to separately buy a code and the code ironically is a lot more expensive than the textbook. So you should always check if you're buying a secondhand textbook if the price of the textbook and the code separately is going to be more than just buying a new textbook and getting a code with the textbook. I think the three subjects in which we did that was physics, chemistry and molecular biology, so MLB. So just take note of that and be aware of that and then before you buy a second hand book check the price, check the price of the codes. Um, all the textbooks that I needed to buy I got from Wisebooks, it's just across from the university the main gate so it's really not difficult to find you can buy it from anywhere but that was the cheapest option that we had at the time but yeah i hope you guys just got a little bit of information from this that it helps calm you down a bit hope that you guys will enjoy your first year really excited for you guys and i wish you guys all the best i really hope that you guys get in and for all the years who are still in high school now really hope you guys make it remember to work hard and it is always difficult but it is always possible just remember, don't panic. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.